guys, in this video I want to talk about the Latin square design, which is a type of experimental design in statistics. So I'm going to begin the video by going over some background, and then at the end of the video I will do an R demo for if you have data, how you can analyze data using the Latin square design. The Latin square design is a special case of an ANOVA model with three factors. And so you can write it out as follows. You're going to have an outcome variable y that is a continuous random variable. And then you're going to regress y on three factors. So you're going to have one factor, I'm going to call that a, which is a factor, so it's a categorical random variable. And then you're also going to have two blocking variables or blocking factors. So I'm going to call that b1 and b2. And b1 and b2 are also categorical random variables. So for this type of ANOVA model, you're going to have a random variable A that has different factor levels or treatment groups, and you want to know how the membership in a treatment group affects the outcome variable Y. The Latin square design is a special case of this type of ANOVA model, and the special case is that for your three categorical variables, the factor levels are going to be the same in all three variables. So the number of factor levels in variable A is going to be equal to the number of factor levels in B1, and it's going to be equal to the number of factor levels in B2. So for different Latin square designs, you can have different number of factor levels, but for the three factors in your model, they have to have the same number of factor levels. So for example, if you have a Latin square design where A has three treatment groups, then you're going to have what's called a 3 by 3 Latin square design, but it could be any number. So for example, you could have a 4 by 4 Latin square design or a 9 by 9 Latin square design. That just means, for example, if you have three, then for your variable A, that has three factor levels. B1 has to have three factor levels and B2 has to have three factor levels. So if it's nine, then all three factors have to have nine levels each. And if you have that type of ANOVA model, then you have what's called a Latin square design. The reason this type of experimental design is known as the Latin square design is because you can visualize every combination of treatment group and then factor level for B1 and factor level for B2 using what's called in mathematics a Latin square. So let's say you have an outcome variable Y and then a factor variable X and X has four treatment groups A, B, C, D. Then you would have what's called a 4x4 four four Latin square design and you can visualize every combination of B1, B2, B2 and X using a Latin square. So here I have one example of one type of 4x4 four four Latin square for this type of design. You can see that you have, let's say, B1 as the rows variable, and that has four different factor levels, and then the columns would be the column variable for B2, and this also has four different factor levels, and then for each combination of the four B1s and four B2s, you would place a different treatment group from your factor X. So this is a statistical application to the mathematical concept of what's known as a Latin square, and they're called Latin squares because we're using the Latin letters of the alphabet to denote the different treatment groups or factor levels in the factor that you want to test. And Latin squares have the special property where each treatment occurs exactly once in every column and every row. So you see, for example, for A's, there's only one A in this first row and one A in this first column. Then the same thing for this A here. This is the only A in this row and the only A in the entire second column. And the same thing for this A and this A. And this is true for every treatment group. So there's only one B in every row and every column. And the same thing for C and same thing for D. So Latin square was the name given to these special types of squares or grids where every cell has either one unique symbol or letter or number to it for every row and every column. And there's a long history to people knowing about or discussing Latin squares. So Latin squares first appeared in art in ancient civilizations in the Middle East. And later on, they were talked about as a mathematical and then later on as a statistical concept. The mathematician Euler was the first person to popularize studying Latin squares as a mathematical concept, and he published a paper in the late 1700s. So since that paper was published, people have started discussing Latin squares in math, and later on they also started discussing it in statistics as well. So Ronald Fisher was the first person to popularize the discussion of Latin squares as a type of experimental design. So he's well known for discussing Latin squares in a textbook he wrote in 1935 called The Design 
design of experiments. And on the cover of that textbook, there is a Latin square. And in the textbook, he devotes a chapter to discussing Latin square designs. However, Ronald Fisher was not the first person to think of having a Latin square design in a statistical experiment. So actually, people have looked into the research literature and they credit this paper with being the first instance of a Latin square design appearing in a publication. And so the first Latin square experimental design is credited to this French guy named Crete for a paper he published in 1788. And this paper is publicly available online, so I will put a link to it in the description box below. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to describe his experiment, and because the data is still publicly available, because he published it in the paper, I'm going to recreate the experiment that he did, or the analysis that he did in R. That's going to be the R demo for the end of this video. And his experiment was as follows. This guy had this idea that he wanted to test out the effect of diet on the weight of sheep. These sheep were going to be used as food, they were eventually going to be slaughtered, and it would be better to have fatter sheep, so you would have more meat on them. And I skimmed the paper, and he said that in the winter months, when it gets very cold, the tradition was to house sheep indoors so they could avoid the winter, and they traditionally were fed corn, which is one of the more expensive grains to grow and to harvest. And so he had this idea that he wanted to test whether they would fatten at the same rate using a different diet, and the advantage of that would be that certain diets or certain grains are cheaper to produce than others. So for example, the tradition was to feed them corn, but corn is very expensive and it takes a lot of land to harvest corn. And he wanted to test the effect of diet using a cheaper grain on the sheep. Without explicitly calling it that in his paper, he ended up being the first person to publish a land square applied to experimental design by performing a 4x4 land square design on his experiment. So he ended up having three variables in his study. So one was the diet of the sheep. So he had four different diets, potatoes, turnips, beets, and corn. And again, corn was the expensive grain that they were trying to avoid feeding the sheep. Then he had four different breeds of sheep. So breed was one of the blocking variables or blocking factors. So he had four different breeds of sheep in his study. And then the second blocking factor was the slaughter date. So for his study, he had 16 samples total of sheep, and then they were given four different diets for the four different breeds of sheep, and then they were slaughtered on four different months. So for the study, he had two different time points where he weighed all the 16 sheep. At the start of the study, they were weighed, and they had one starting weight, and then each month he would slaughter four sheep, and he picked randomly which month the sheep would be slaughtered, and then he would weigh them at the date that they would be slaughtered. So for his ANOVA model, he wanted to see what the effect of the diet would be on the weight difference, so the difference between the final weight and the starting weight, how the diet affects that, controlling for breed and slaughter date. And so this was his Latin square design. And since the data was published in this paper and it's publicly available, in the final part of the video, I'm going to switch to R and show the analysis of this data. All right, so I'm just going to go over a quick demo of how you would analyze a Latin square design in R. And again, I'm going to use the famous sheep data set. So actually, since this data set is relatively well known in the statistics community, at least, it is a data set that's publicly available in an R package. So the R package is called Agridat, and it is found using this command. Now, this data set that's in the R package doesn't give you the weight difference directly. It gives gives you the weight at the two different time points. So everyone has a zero time point for the 16 samples, and then it has the other 16 samples, which are the second weights at the slaughter dates. However, for the purpose of this video, I wanted the weight difference as a variable and not the weight and the dates. So I just created my own data set that uses the same data, but I liked the way I configured it better. So I have in my data set that I'm going to use for this video, a variable for food, a variable for sheep breed, month of slaughter, and then the weight difference. So that's the direct outcome variable that we want to test on. 
and then to fit a land square design in R, like we said at the beginning of the video, it's just a special case of an ANOVA model. So there's just one line of code to fit an ANOVA model to the data. So that's this line here. I'm going to regress the weight difference from the slaughter date to the starting date on three factor variables. So we have food, which is what we really care about, and then two blocking variables, breed and month. And we're going to fit that to a linear model and R is going to know that it's an ANOVA model because the data sets are clearly levels. So they're not numbers, so it's going to recognize it as categorical variables. And then to test the effect of food on the outcome variable weight difference, we just want to check the effect of that variable using an ANOVA table. So to do that, we're going to run this line of code, which is ANOVA, and then I pass in the name of the model and that's going to show me the final ANOVA table. So what we really care is the result of the F test of the effect of food on weight difference. That's the first line here. So the ANOVA table tells us that the F statistic for the effect of food on weight difference, the number is 4.0955, so that's the F value. And if we check the P value for that, it's going to be 0.06703. So if we are testing the significance at a alpha level of 0.05, which is the common significance level, then at 0.05, the effect of food is not statistically significant. What this means is that the four treatment groups, the four different diets, are not significantly affecting the weight of the sheep when they get slaughtered. And this is after controlling for breed and after controlling for month. So the hypothesis that the researcher had was correct. The different food types, so the corn, beets, turnips, and potatoes, are not significantly affecting the weight of the sheep after they get slaughtered. So what that means for the researcher or the research study is that instead of trying to grow expensive crops like corn, you can instead grow a cheaper crop like potatoes or turnips or beets and then feed the sheep that grain and it will be cheaper and easier to maintain your flock of sheep. So that's all I wanted to go over in this video and thank you guys for watching.